Hi friends, uh, my name is Brian and uh, it's another installment in my video blog. I've decided to transition a little bit away from doing uh, project videos and into more of a blog. So uh, I am uh, remodeling a 1965 home and uh, took it all the way down to the studs, replaced all the major systems. Um, some of the systems were end of life, so the plumbing was uh, clogged and screwed up. So right now I'm working on sheetrock and uh, I've got about six and a half thousand square feet of sheetrock to do. So I, uh, I'm just shooting some video in case some of you guys are interested in following along. Every day that I work on the house I'll try to shoot some video and um, I'll, I'll share what I think are tips and tricks along the way. Um, I just finished uh, touching up some of the mud in, in the stairway. Uh, I was using my small ladder it's a, a Harbor Freight model that was on sale for about $100 earlier this year. It's normally about $150, I think. It's a good little ladder, um, fairly reliable. So uh, I am working with hot mud, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to touch up the lower parts of the stairwell that I can reach without being on a ladder. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and aim the camera down the stairs. and you guys can kind of follow along. So what I do is I look for places where there are um, holes or gaps in the, in the mud or scratches in it. And I come back and I coat them with mud, always more mud than I think it needs, and then I scrape it, and this is, you know, floating. And what I'm trying to do is get this as smooth as possible so that when I texture, any imperfections will not be visible. And, uh, you know, Texturing is really an artistic touch. It is not a substitute for a good finishing job. Sometimes I, I laugh because I think people texture because they didn't want to finish the sheetrock. And uh, that's not what it's for. video yesterday but uh, what happens I got tired and uh, ended up taking a nap so I didn't get done nearly as much as I ex had wanted to get done yesterday whoops of uh, drywall mud or drywall compound. Um, one is called setting compound and it, it cures by a chemical reaction and the other is called ready mix and it curses by no chemical reaction. Um, now the, the ready mix is what you use for texturing but uh, other than that I don't actually like ready mix and um, I use um, setting compound for everything and I probably shouldn't I should probably be using uh, ready mix for my final coats but you know this is just one of these things this is how I learned to do it and so this is how I like to do it and uh, I think the results come out good I think this is a harder compound um, I actually think it's the same thing as what's inside the sheetrock. rock. 
So it's looking pretty good. I need to uh, set up my other ladder because I see some stuff that I need to touch up up here and I just, they, there's no way I'm gonna reach it. So. First things first, I've gotta unlock. Well, just have to go down here and do it, I guess. Yuck. Now, before I go up on the ladder, I'm gonna put some mud in my bucket. I mean, my my uh, tray. Now, in yesterday's video, I was using 45-minute mud. <sighs> Today, I'm using 90-minute mud, which means that I have roughly 90 minutes of working time. Oh wow, I see some serious misses here. That's okay, I'll get those with the other blade here in a second. So I've missed a screw hole here and I missed a screw hole down there. That's uh, actually kind of embarrassing. that happens is you often get a little bit of tear out where your screws are. Um, so when you come back and you sand it, it normally takes a little bit of the mud out from around the screw hole. And the uh, optimal solution is to come back with a spatula and fix. All right, so I'm just gonna keep that up here because I will use the small one to do the inside of the windows. But uh, what I'm gonna do right now is just kind of get comfortable and safe.
All right, so I've got to do a second coat on uh, ceiling here. This should go relatively quick. Lovely sip of Coca-Cola followed by washing down some ibuprofen.
and then this blind has served its life, so it's time for it to go. That is a DCF 886. Um, I want to know more about doing rounded corners, which is what I'm doing on all of my all of my sheetrock corners. I did shoot another video recently that talks about how to do rounded corners on your sheetrock. And I go into a lot of detail on that video. Mud's starting to set up on me, so uh, I'm having a lot of trouble with it. But it, it's okay. I mean, it'll. This will not be the uh, final coat for this window. Now, I'm going to set that down because this pan probably weighs 8 to 10 pounds and it uh, actually hurts my left hand. So what I'm doing here is just filling in all the gaps and the uneven spots. And to do that, I just, I fill it with mud and then I scrape it clean perpendicular to how I might normally scrape the wall. And uh, you know, there are probably other ways of doing this, but this works really well for me and I get really beautiful results. And I always encourage people to do things with the end in mind one of Stephen Covey's sayings. And if you haven't heard of Stephen Covey, I suggest uh, you check out some of his stuff. Tends to be a little bit on the dry side, but it's good advice. He uh, has a series of products around the Seven Habits of Highly Successful People, or Highly Effective People. I can't remember which one it is, but it's all good advice. And one of my favorites is Start With The End In Mind.
All right. Got a little bit more I can get in here. All right, so that's a step in the right direction and you know, it's not unusual to make three, four passes on, on a wall um, or I mean, on a window. So this will be the third pass that I've made on this, on this window. And at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape up plastic in the window and get it ready to spray uh, texture and primer because that's only another couple of days away. If I had worked harder yesterday, it might be tomorrow's project, but that's not gonna happen. Now, one of the things that's well worth your time is to look around and see if you've got any areas that have uh, where a piece of mud has fallen down and stopped on the sheetrock. If you do, it's really easy to scrape those off while they're wet. Um, otherwise, you have to sand them off. Or you can try.